The New York Times crossword puzzle is a daily puzzle published in The New York Times, online at the newspaper's website, syndicated to more than 300 other newspapers and journals. And available as mobile apps, the puzzle is created by various freelance constructors and has been edited by Will Schwartz since 1993. The puzzle becomes increasingly difficult throughout the week, with the easiest puzzle on Monday and the most difficult puzzle on Saturday. The larger Sunday crossword, which appears in the New York Times Magazine, is an icon in American culture. It is typically intended to be as difficult as a Thursday puzzle. The standard daily crossword is 15 squares times 15 squares, while the Sunday crossword measures 21 squares times 21 squares. Previously, 23 times 23 square Sunday puzzles were also accepted. In addition, a special set of 25 times 25 Sunday puzzles with two sets of clues easy and hard was published in 1999 to commemorate the upcoming millennium topic history while crosswords became popular in the early 1920s it was not until 1942 that the new york times which initially regarded crosswords as frivolous calling them a primitive form of mental exercise began running a crossword in its Sunday edition. The first puzzle ran on Sunday, February 15, 1942. The motivating impulse for the Times to finally run the puzzle which took over 20 years even though its publisher, Arthur Hayes Salzberger, was a longtime crossword fan appears to have been the bombing of Pearl Harbor. In a memo dated December 18, 1941, an editor conceded that the puzzle deserved space in the paper, considering what was happening elsewhere in the world and that readers might need something to occupy themselves during blackouts. The puzzle proved popular, and Salzberger himself would author a Times puzzle before the year was out. In 1950, the crossword became a daily feature. That first daily puzzle was published without an author line, and to this day the identity of the author of the first weekday Times crossword remains unknown. There have been four editors of the puzzle Margaret Farrar from the puzzle's inception until 1969, Will Wang, former head of the Times's Metropolitan Copy Desk, until 1977, Eugene T. Maleska until his death in 1993, and the current editor, Will Shorts. In addition to editing the Times crosswords, Shorts founded and runs the annual American Crossword Puzzle Tournament as well as the World Puzzle Championship where he remains captain of the U.S. team, has published numerous books of crosswords, Sudoku, and other puzzles, authors occasional variety puzzles aka, Second Sunday Puzzles, see below, to appear alongside the Sunday Times puzzle, and serves as, Puzzle Master, on the NPR show, Weekend Edition Sunday. The popularity of the puzzle grew over the years, until it came to be considered the most prestigious of the widely circulated crosswords in America. Its popularity is attested to by the numerous celebrities and public figures who've publicly proclaimed their liking for the puzzle, including opera singer Beverly Sills, author Norman Mailer, baseball pitcher Mike Messina, former President Bill Clinton, conductor Leonard Bernstein, TV host John Stewart, and music duo The Indigo Girls. The Times puzzles have been collected in hundreds of books over the years from various publishers, most notably Random House and St. Martin's Press, the current publisher of the series. In addition to their appearance in the printed newspaper, the Times puzzles also appear online at the paper's website, where they require a separate subscription to access. In 2007, Majesco Entertainment released the New York Times Crosswords Game, a video game adaptation for the Nintendo DS handheld. The game includes over 1,000 Times crosswords from all days of the week. Various other forms of merchandise featuring the puzzle have been created over the years, including dedicated electronic crossword handhelds that just contain Times crosswords, as well as a variety of Times crossword-themed memorabilia including cookie jars, baseballs, cufflinks, plates, coasters, mousepads, and the like. <laughs> Style and conventions Will Shorts does not write the Times crossword himself, the puzzles are submitted to him by a wide variety of contributors. A full specification sheet listing the paper's requirements for crossword puzzle submission can be found online see external links or by writing to the paper. Aside from increasing in difficulty throughout the week, the Monday to Thursday puzzles and the Sunday puzzle always have a theme, some sort of connection between at least three long usually across answers, such as a similar type of pun, letter substitution, or alteration in each entry. 
Another theme type is that of a humorous quotation broken up into symmetrical portions and spread throughout the grid. For example, the February 11, 2004, puzzle by Ethan Friedman featured a theme quotation, Any idiot can face, a crisis it's this, day-to-day -day living, that wears you out. This quote has been attributed to Anton Chekhov, but this attribution is in dispute and the specific source has not been identified. Notable dates such as holidays or anniversaries of famous events are often commemorated with an appropriately themed puzzle, although only two are currently commemorated on a routine annual basis, Christmas and April Fool's Day. The Friday and Saturday puzzles, the most difficult in the paper, are usually unthemed and wide open, with fewer black squares and more long words. The maximum word count for a themed weekday puzzle is normally 78 words, while the maximum for an unthemed Friday or Saturday puzzle is 72. Sunday puzzles must contain 140 words or fewer. Given the Times's reputation as a paper for a literate, well-read, and somewhat arty audience, puzzles frequently reference works of literature, art, or classical music, as well as modern TV, movies, or other touchstones of popular culture. The puzzle follows a number of conventions, both for tradition's sake and to aid solvers in completing the crossword. Nearly all the Times crossword grids have rotational symmetry, they can be rotated 180 degrees and remain identical. Rarely, puzzles with only vertical or horizontal symmetry can be found, yet rarer are asymmetrical puzzles, usually when an unusual theme requires breaking the symmetry rule. This rule has been part of the puzzle since the beginning. When asked why, initial editor Margaret Farrar is said to have responded, Because it is prettier. Any time a clue contains the tag, ABBR, or an abbreviation more significant than, EG. The answer will be an abbreviation e org. Equals AMA. Any time a clue ends in a question mark, the answer is a play on words. Occasionally, themed puzzles will require certain squares to be filled in with a symbol, multiple letters, or a word, rather than one letter so-called rebus puzzles. This symbol, letters, word will be repeated throughout in each themed entry. For example, the December 6, 2012 puzzle by Jeff Chen featured a rebus theme based on the chemical pH scale used for acids and bases, which required the letters pH to be written together in a single square in several locations in the puzzle in the middle of entries such as triumph or Sophocles. French, Spanish, or Latin language answers, and more rarely answers from other languages are indicated either by a tag in the clue giving the answer language e.g., summer, fr. single quote. <laughs> ETE or by the use in the clue of a word from that language, often a personal or place name e.g., friends of Pierre. Amos or the ocean, e.g., in Orleans equals O. Clues and answers must always match in part of speech, tense, number, and degree. Thus a plural clue always indicates a plural answer and the same for singular, a clue in the past tense will always be matched by an answer in the same tense, and a clue containing a comparative or superlative will always be matched by an answer in the same degree. The answer word or any of the answer words, if it consists of multiple words will never appear in the clue itself. Unlike in some easier puzzles in other outlets, the number of words in the answer is not indicated in the clue itself. So a one-word clue can mean a multiple-word answer. The theme, if any, will be applied consistently throughout the puzzle. E.g., if one of the theme entries is a particular variety of pun, all the theme entries will be of that type. In general, any words that might appear elsewhere in the newspaper, such as well-known brand names, pop culture figures, or current phrases of the moment, are fair game. No entries involving profanity, sad or disturbing topics, or overly explicit answers should be expected, though some have snuck in. The April 3, 2006 puzzle, contained the word scumbag a slang term for a condom, which had previously appeared in a Times article, quoting people using the word. Shorts apologized and said the term would not appear again. The word penis also appeared once in a Shorts edited puzzle in 1995, clued as, the underscore underscore mightier than the sword. Spoken phrases are always indicated by enclosure in quotation marks, e.g., get out of here, equals leave now. Short exclamations are sometimes clued by a phrase in square brackets, e.g., it's cold, equals burr. 
when the answer can only be substituted for the clue when preceding a specific other word, this other word is indicated in parentheses. For example, think over equals mull, since think only means mull when preceding the word over, i.e., think over and mull over are synonymous, but think and mull are not necessarily synonymous otherwise. The point here is that the single word think can be replaced by the single word mull, but only when the following word is over. When the answer needs an additional word in order to fit the clue, this other word is indicated with the use of with. For example, become understood within equals sink since sink in, but not sink alone means to become understood. The point here is that the single phrase become understood can be replaced with the single phrase sink in, regardless of whether or not it is followed by anything else. Time style is to always capitalize the first letter of a clue, regardless of whether the clue is a complete sentence or whether the first word is a proper noun. On occasion, this is used to deliberately create difficulties for the solver, e.g., in the clue, John, for one. It is ambiguous as to whether the clue is referring to the proper name John or to the slang term for a bathroom. <laughs> Variety puzzles Topic: Second Sunday puzzles. In addition to the primary crossword, The Times publishes a second Sunday puzzle each week of varying types, something that the first crossword editor, Margaret Farrar, saw as a part of the paper's Sunday puzzle offering from the start. She wrote in a memo when The Times was considering whether or not to start running crosswords that the smaller puzzle, which would occupy the lower part of the page, could provide variety each Sunday. It could be topical, humorous, have rhymed definitions or story definitions or quiz definitions. The combination of these two would offer meat and dessert, and catch the fancy of all types of puzzlers. Currently, Every Other Week is an acrostic puzzle authored by Emily Cox and Henry Rathvon, with a rotating selection of other puzzles, including diagramless crosswords, puns and anagrams, cryptics, aka British style crosswords. Split decisions, spiral crosswords, word games, and more rarely, other types some authored by Shorts himself—the only puzzles he has created for the times during his tenure as crossword editor. Of these types, the acrostic has the longest and most interesting history, beginning on May 9, 1943, authored by Elizabeth S. Kingsley, who is credited with inventing the puzzle type, and continued to write the Times acrostic until December 28, 1952. From then until August 13, 1967 it was written by Kingsley's former assistant, Doris Nash Wortman, then it was taken over by Thomas H. Middleton for a period of over 30 years, until August 15, 1999, when the pair of Cox and Rathvon became just the fourth author of the puzzle in its history. The name of the puzzle also changed over the years, from «double crostic» to «Kingsley double crostic» «acrostic puzzle» and finally since 1991 just acrostic topic <laughs> other puzzles as well as publishing a second word puzzle on sundays the times publishes a kenkan numbers puzzle a variant of the popular sudoku logic puzzles each day of the week the kenkan and second sunday puzzles are available online at the new york times crosswords and games page as are set Logic puzzles, a word search variant called spelling B, in which the solver uses a hexagonal diagram of letters to spell words of four or more letters in length, and a monthly bonus crossword with a theme relating to the current month. The Times Online also publishes a daily mini crossword, usually 5x5 five five but occasionally 7x7 seven seven or larger, which is significantly easier than the traditional daily puzzle. Records and puzzles of note Fans of the Times crossword have kept track of a number of records and interesting puzzles primarily from among those published in Shorts's tenure, including those below. All puzzles published from October 23, 1996, on are available to online subscribers to the Times crossword. 
Fewest words in a daily 15x15 15 15 puzzle, 50 words, on Saturday, June 29, 2013 by Joe Crozel, in a Sunday puzzle, 128 words on July 15, 2012, by Randolph Ross Most words in a daily puzzle, 86 words on Tuesday, December 23, 2008 by Joe Crozel, in a 21x21 21 21 Sunday puzzle, 150 words, on June 26, 1994, by Nancy Nicholson Jolene and on November 21, 1993, by Peter Gordon the first Sunday puzzle edited by Will Shorts Fewest black squares in a daily 15 by 15 puzzle, 17 blocks, on Friday, July 27, 2012 by Joe Crozel Most prolific author, Manny Nazowski is easily the crossword constructor who has been published most frequently in The Times under shorts, with 241 puzzles, although other authors may have written more puzzles than that under prior editors. The record for most Sunday puzzles is held by Jack Lozato, with 119 including two written under pseudonyms. Former editor Eugene T. Maleska wrote 110 himself, including eight under other names. Youngest constructor, Daniel Larson, aged 13 years and four months. Oldest constructor, Bernice Gordon was 100 on August 11, 2014, when her final Times crossword was published. She died in 2015 at the age of 101. Gordon published over 150 crosswords in the Times since her first puzzle was published by Margaret Farrar in 1952. Greatest difference in ages between two constructors of a single puzzle, 83, a puzzle by David Steinberg and Bernice Gordon with the theme age difference. 15 letter word stacks. On December 29, 2012, Joe Crozel managed to stack five 15 letter entries on top of one another. Vanessa Williams, elected official, narrative poetry, a teenager in love, and L I E C H T E N S T E I N E R, something never before or since achieved four puzzles, two by Crozel, one by Crozel and Martin Ashwood Smith, and one by Kevin G. Durr, have managed to stack four 15 letter entries. A few crosswords have achieved recognition beyond the community of crossword solvers. Perhaps the most famous is the November 5, 1996 puzzle by Jeremiah Farrell, published on the day of the U.S. presidential election, which has been featured in the movie Wordplay and the book The Crossword Obsession by Coral Amendi, as well as discussed by Peter Jennings on ABC News, featured on CNN, and elsewhere. The two leading candidates that year were Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. In Farrell's puzzle one of the long clue-answer combinations read title for 39 across tomorrow equals mr president the remarkable feature of the puzzle is that 39 across could be answered either clinton or bob dole and all the down clues and answers that crossed it would work either way eg black halloween animal could be either bat or cat depending on which answer you filled in at 39 across similarly french 101 word could equal louis or we etc Constructors have dubbed this type of puzzle a Schrödinger or quantum puzzle after the famous paradox of Schrödinger's cat, which was both alive and dead at the same time. Since Farrell's invention of it, nine other constructors—Patrick Merrill, Ethan Friedman, David J. Kahn, Damon J. Gulchinsky, Dan Schoenholz, Andrew Reynolds, Casey Walker and David Corfoot in collaboration, and Ben Tsig have made use of a similar trick. In another notable Times crossword, 27-year-old Bill Gottlieb proposed to his girlfriend, Emily Mindel, via the crossword puzzle of January 7, 1998, written by noted crossword constructor Bob Klon. The answer to 14 across, Microsoft Chief, to some, was Billg, also Gottlieb's name and last initial. 20 across, 1729 Jonathan Swift pamphlet, was a modest proposal. And 56 across, 1992 Paula Abdul hit, was Will You Marry Me? She said yes. The puzzle attracted attention in the AP, an article in The Times itself, and elsewhere. On May 7, 2007, former U.S. President Bill Clinton, a self professed longtime fan of The Times crossword, collaborated with noted crossword constructor Kathy Milhauser on an online only crossword in which Milhauser constructed the grid and Clinton wrote the clues. Shorts described the president's work as, laugh out loud and noted that he as editor changed very little of Clinton's clues, which featured more wordplay than found in a standard puzzle. 
Clinton made his print constructing debut on Friday, May 12, 2017, collaborating with Vic Fleming on one of the co constructed puzzles celebrating the crossword's 75th anniversary, The Times Crossword of Thursday, April 2, 2009, by Brendan Emmett Quigley, featured theme answers that all ran the gamut of movie ratings beginning with the kid friendly G and finishing with adults only X, which, however, is now replaced with the less crossword friendly NC 17 rating. The seven theme entries were Gary Gigax, Grand Prix, Gore-Tex, Gag Reflex, Gummo Marx, Gasoline Tax, and Generation X. In addition, the puzzle contained the clues, answers of Weird Al Yankovic's underscore underscore on Jeopardy equals I lost and I'll take New York Times crossword for two hundred dollars underscore underscore equals Alex. What made the puzzle notable is that the prior night's episode of the U.S. television show Jeopardy! featured video clues of Will Shorts for five of the theme answers all but Gary Gigax and Generation X which the contestants attempted to answer during the course of the show. See also Wordplay film, a 2006 documentary about the crossword